All right, we're back with another episode of Zero Review from Chibi. This is episode eight. I believe this is the lap pillow one. Give it to me. Okay, so yes. all week long, since around like Tuesday or Monday, I was being spammed by so many people letting hmm. me know that there but was what? a possibility that ReZero would not have an episode for three weeks in a row. What? ReZero hiatus? This is bullshit, bro. These production staff, hold on. That's eight years ago. It doesn't matter. Oh, because of a tennis match. Tennis and match? When I heard this news, honestly, bullshit. I. I was just like, no, 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 please, please don't tell me. I'm going to have to wait three weeks to see the continuation after what happened last week. I was like, don't do this. And what happened last week? Well, it was leading up to the lap pillow moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. La last week was basically just fucking ruined and then jumping off a cliff. Honestly, it's not a bad part, that bad place to stop, right? Yes, it is a literal cliffhanger. He jumped off the cliff, but it's just like, all right, we're going to get started a good start. And honestly, and three weeks is inexcusable. Fucking sucks. But, but, <laughs> fucking irregular. No, no, no. What's that show? Misfit of Demon King Academy season two. Six month hiatus. <laughs> Isekai OG son. <laughs> Pretty much two month gap between each episode. And once you have that much of a gap, like, it does a lot of damage to the amount of people checking it out, the trends, the attention dies off. But hey, Rezero's still working hard to me like ReZero that was a, a fucking horrible cliffhanger and if I had to wait three weeks for the next episode I was gonna be kind of upset and so I was waiting <laughs> fuck it we going to the light novels waiting until today to see if the episode would actually come out thankfully Crunchyroll actually announced a couple days ago that they would be releasing the episode so that's kind of why I didn't put a video out on it last week's episode was by far one of my personal favorite episodes of yeah. ReZero but I need to retract that statement and I need to really Episode 8, The Lap Pillow. I... Honestly, my personal favorite is still Episode 3. Because everyone's favorites are dependent on what each person values, right? And I value the action. I value the hype. I value the triumphant heroic moment of Reinhardt saving the day. And it feeling like a season finale, right? But I think on an emotional level, Episode 7 hit harder, right? But episode 8 was a fantastic episode, but I wouldn't put it above 3 or 7. It was definitely good. It was actually kind of crazy how Subaru, like, it was like a bad timeline of, like, Rem dying, us ditching Amelia. The only good thing was Betty, that run, and we learned that we need to really reach out to Betty and just basically absolve her pride and try to figure out, instead of doing it things by ourselves, reach out for help and see what you can do, and we actually did make progress that time. I say that I think this episode is probably one of my personal best now. Because this episode blew- We're going to keep this reference for next episode reviews to see if, he, if Chibi changes his opinion again. And he can. For sure he can. All my expectations out of the water. Because when I saw the end of last week's episode, I thought that Subaru, he finally just got over that he needed to die. For instance, committing suicide where he can reset everything and help everybody else out. And I talked well in depth about that, of how, you know, he went against, like, the natural human reaction. I, I talked about, you know, how his response was. It was actually a real human response because he finally broke down after constantly working up these relationships. And then they're just gone like a snap of the finger after you die. I mean, I talked all about that, so I'm not going to really dive completely back into that. But, however, I did not expect the episode episode this episode to expand upon what last week's episode did which Tell was me. very brilliant by studio white fox they did a very good job with the atmosphere that last what are they expanding chibi had. they did not waste the potential character development that subaru could have gotten and they used that potential in this episode they used it to the absolute fullest and let me get into what that is when give it subaru to me is in the middle of this episode everything looks fine like he's doing everything he can to make sure that everything is going right he wants to save the twins you know he wants yeah and this time we're like trying way too hard right we had a triumphant jump off the cliff and now we have the motivations to save rem and rem even though they traumatized us because they held our hands right in bed and basically like saved us so we want to return that favor but it's like this time we can't afford to fuck up every moment matters and that creates this weird counterproductive moment where he tries too hard fucks more things up gets even more suspicious and how ironic is that because you wanted to try hard this time you wanted to care so much that it's actually working against you 
wants to save Amelia, he wants to save himself, he wants to figure out who put on the curse, different things like that. He's just trying to get as much information, but also he kind of knows what he needs to do. And he's putting up this facade the entire episode with constantly trying to hide his real emotions. Like, he's constantly acting like, oh, I'm happy, everything is fine, you know, I know where everything is. He's just trying to do everything to make it look... On the point of I know where everything is, when he broke that Voss and then went to the place to collect the replacement Voss, that no one ever told him where it was. That was like, oh my god, you are so suspicious right now, man. Like he is trying to be all fine and well, but his actions showed that it was someone that was overburdened and doing way too much. He was just, yes. his back was pretty much breaking from all the pressure. And like the pressure of trying to make sure this one counts, right? And we can't let anyone know and he's holding all that shit. And Puck can read the minds of people that he contacts, I think. But Puck was like, yeah, Super is mine, and it's the thing that he's saying, everything is all jumbled up. And you could hear this, like, background atmospheric noise of this, like, encroaching white noise or something, as well as his repeated uh, lines of, I feel sick, I feel sick, I feel sick. And then, you know, there's this transition of how the sound gets big into a puke transition scene. That was pretty cool, but, <laughs> you know, artistic. It basically, us just enjoying Super's PTSD. And it finally got to him. I mean, it doesn't just go away. Subaru, he doesn't forget what happened in the previous lives he had. He doesn't forget that. He doesn't forget how he died. He doesn't forget the faces, the conversations. He doesn't forget none of that. So he constantly carries this weight over into his next life. And it actually once again carries over some of the trauma he had. And he finally, once again, lets out of his, his emotions to someone, for instance, Amelia, and lets her know exactly how he truly feels. I like Not how below. last week's episode, right at the beginning, and had it to where Subaru was spilling his guts to the, one of the twins, mm. and just saying, like, you know how it feels to constantly lose all these relationships and all that? How it feels to constantly repeat and all this? He's just, he's letting out all of his feelings. He was trying that probably hit me the hardest when he, like released everything that he was holding up and saying like what should i do what am i supposed to do what can i do this is fucked up and us watching it it's just like i genuinely don't know you really are trying everything it's so like it's still not working and then rem's like you're crazy what are you even talking about i don't remember any of this and it's just like oh trying to let it out to one of the twins before he was about to die but then he got denied and he died anyways and then everybody forgot about it yes the she'd be sure with the holes is pretty <laughs> Got a couple holes in this shirt. That's how you can tell he's a true OG, man. Wearing, you know, not ca caring about fashion. You know, wearing tattered shirts. Talking about ReZero. God damn it, we are a weeb. But he continued on remembering. And in this episode, it's kind of like the exact opposite of that situation. It's a more happier tone. Yes. For instance, the last week's episode is more tragic because he let out his emotions, but then he died. In this episode, he gets a lap pillow, which 10 out of 10, by the way, I'll get in that in a moment. But he gets a lap pillow, and then Amelia listens to Subaru as he finally lets out his real emotions. And he gets. And it's really weird because everything he let out is like him telling her about how hard he had it in an abstract, vague way, because obviously he cannot tell her that he's regressing. And Amelia must be also confused because, like, to her, it's like this kid showed out of nowhere to save her at the loot cellar, then came over, right? Well, it didn't come over. She took him here. And then after a day, he's having a mental collapse. So, like, think about from Amelia's perspective of how this even seems. And the lap pillow also was not a romantic gesture. I don't think it was at all. I think it was a fucking pity lap pillow that we got. It's to say everything he wants until the point he cries himself to sleep. And it's not the most manly thing ever, but I mean, he needed to let his emotions out. This poor man is overburdened and his back is breaking from all the pressure because he's died over and over after what was said last week by Amelia and the twins and what happened to him in, you know, his previous life. It was just a very sad situation. And so this just does not go away when he comes back. It doesn't because he still has the chance of being killed. And knowing that one of the twins will kill him... That is a scary thought. So when he wakes up and realizes that, you know, if he says one uh, wrong thing or does one bad move, he can die right there. And so he knows that he... <laughs> Rem was so suspicious the entire time. But again, I think that the scaredness, the trauma, pretty much went away. Because, like, we need to have, like, a reason to kind of protect Rem and Rem, even though they fucking just, like, killed us. 
And that is the hand holding part, right? He needs to play his cards right, put up a facade, be happy. And throughout the entire episode, when he's trying to do that, he gets sick. He feels sick. He feels like he's disgusted with himself because he can't be really happy. He's not really happy at that moment which makes so much sense because honestly thinking about this would you be happy if you constantly died got no. brought back remembered everything and then you're around the people that killed you but you're trying to save the people and you're trying to be happy because of it just to make sure everything is set nice and straight like someone as petty as me someone that is vengeful and as petty as me i probably could not let that go that this blue haired bitch fucking killed me straight up i would take that so personally I, 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 don't, I don't know. I am definitely not a good person. Subaru is a very good person, right? He understands that even if he's traumatized by them, even despite all the horrific acts that we've seen, because they were there for him, because they held his hand when he was injured and, you know, trying to get restored, right? What was it? Betty helped, but also Rem and Ram helped after we first got here from the blood loss and the organ fucked up thing that Elsa did to us, right? <laughs> I would be such a menace in a show like this, man. I, I could 100%, like, I see myself joining the witch's cult. I, I see myself becoming a fucking, like, the Pope, bro. Just be a cult leader. Fuck this entire world. Yeah, it would be a bad run with me. I mean, think about that for a second. I yeah. mean, you know, majority of people I don't think would be necessarily happy. They'd probably be really fucking miserable. They would. So Subaru finally kind of expressing these emotions of how miserable he is, how unhappy he is, how he feels sick, and it finally gets to where he froze up in this episode. That was just a 10 out of 10 execution moment for this entire episode because I love how Subaru's character is not just one dimensional because when I- Yes, because in the first arc, it was a bit too early to see what kind of character he really is, right? He seems like a Giga Chat that showed up out of nowhere from a different world and just adapted into the Isekai. So finally, you know, treating characters like NPCs because these are different tropes and niches that he's already seen before in fantasy material, right? And he has this confidence to just do whatever he wants. And he's even pretty athletically or even like hand-eye coordination, physical strength, blah, blah, blah. It's all pretty good. And at the end of arc one, we didn't really get to see too much into Subaru's like psyches. Yes, there was a moment where he hesitated about using Return by Death because of how traumatizing Elsa's experience was when she got us up. But season, but arc one did not uh, tell me that like this kid was going through a lot, that like this power is something that he doesn't even want to use. Arc two now, we're really, really getting in to the inner psyche of Subaru and how terrifying it is to use the power and how helpless that we feel. So again, that's another beautiful way of balancing and quote unquote nerfing this regression power because if you didn't have the psychological component, then where's the difficulty? He would just simply ruthlessly cut himself, restart, and just dominate the game. But would that really be fun to watch? It might be for a bit, and I still want that to happen. I still want this like dark super moment to happen, just like in episode seven of Charlotte, where the main character just basically throws away his humanity and says, I don't care anymore. That would be fun to watch for a bit. If that happened the entire way through, it gets boring real fast. Just for a bit, give me that. I was first saw the beginning of the series. I mean, it seemed like a lot of his, you know, revert in times, like going back, it didn't bug him completely, which mm. I kind of slightly mentioned in last week's episode. But he did say he wanted to cherish his life because he didn't want to die. But it was never really died into how much it might have bothered someone if they constantly died over and over. And he didn't really express that until mm -hmm. last week's episode and this week's episode. And when he finally starts letting out his emotions and stuff, it just shows another side of his character that really adds more characterization and development that, than we already had. It was an ex. I don't want to throw Rudy under the bus. But maybe it's because I could never really relate to Mushoku Tensei's Rudy as a character compared to Subaru, where I feel like he's such a relatable character. Why is that? Is that because of my also inner psyches of how prideful I am? Like, I'm not a good person at all. Neither is Rudy. But I could never really relate to Rudy's trauma. All the fucking loser shit that he did back in IRL. I guess I just looked at, at that as like a pathetic loser and every time he deals with the trauma and overcomes it, I can appreciate the writing. I can appreciate him overcoming the difficulties. But never did I really feel this personal fucking connection as I do with Subaru. Maybe it's different because it's regression and because we as the audience remembers everything that he does but no one else does. Maybe there's a special connection there. So it's not about like how much you relate to a character but simply this different 
mechanic existing, which makes us really invested into the character because we remember, right? We remember everything he did and we root for him, but everyone else forgets there. And that connection maybe is the missing link. Excellent episode to develop his character through all of these, you know, time loops. So besides that, however, there's a couple of scenes in this episode that I need to talk about. For one, there's a magic scene. You have Beatrice Shemak. in the library, which is very cute. Curses. And then the lap pillow. Yeah. And then also the curse. And then the other witches that were devoured by the jealous yes, witch. Yes, the lore. So talking Legends. about all this, let's start with the magic. So the magic point of this episode was very intriguing. Very interesting stuff that really got my attention. And I wanted so what do we know about magic? Well, we know that there is uh, mana that exists that you can uh, use a gate to use magic. Right, there's a magic users who creates magic using the mana internally, and then there is spirit arch users who uses external mana, meaning it doesn't have to come from inside. You can take mana from outside and come together. And then there's curses, which is a subsection of magic and spirit arch users, which is more common in the northern provinces, I think. To find out more as much as I can. And then there's like the elements affinity, right? Everyone's mana has like a specific theme. Earth, fire, wind, fucking ice, water, I forget. But then beyond the original four regular normie elements, there's also light and, not dark, shadow. And Subaru is shadow, which has more to do with debuffs, and we learned Shamak, a scuffed virgin. So Subaru, he apparently has the attribute of a shadow user, yeah. so he can use shadows. And just like that, right? It's just, isn't that weird? That Not weird, it's actually quite fitting to his character and his association with the Witch of Envy. Right? And it just makes sense that he would be Shadow. And it's mainly a class of all debuffs. Where you're silenced and you can't do nothing, or you're blind and you can't see. Subaru, you know, he's actually a Shadow user that could do something similar to this. But here is the thing. He, at this time, he really can't use magic. I mean, he expelled all his magic at once when he tried to do something. Looks like a smoke bomb. Where he was not even able to move. And that caused him to be in a situation where he found out about this little plant that could actually help him out to give him some more yep. mana Senzu beans. before he can move around. So that most likely might be something very important later on down the road. I, I could see something like that being important. That little, you know, bean or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Tubar is going to use Shamak and then immediately eat that. The bean started with the letter B. I forget the exact name of it, but I'm just going to call it a Senzu bean. For that Amelia fed Subaru. But the next thing, though, is is talking about the magic in general that was used Boko? against him. It seems like Boko. Suru has PTSD. I mean, the way he got uh, the magic used on him, the shadow magic from Puck, and then he couldn't see anything, it was so... Yeah, the darkness overwhelming us, bro, that shit traumatic. And then even in episode 9, when Rem and Subaru is about to enter the forest of the Witch Fiends... And Rem's fucking weapon jingle. And we're like, oh, oh my god, PTSD. I wonder if we're ever going to get over that. So creepy because it shows you that he still currently is scared. He has all this fear about what happened in last week's episode. It just goes to emphasize that point of how he cannot really tell anyone about what is going on. Because if you remember in last week's episode when he tried to say like about a situation of how he's been dying and you know he remembers everything, he got stopped, like time completely froze, and when he had that hand come out about to like mm. rip out his heart or something or crush his heart. And every time I see that dark hand, I just always think it's Satella due to the imagery. Well, because of that, we know with this episode, that scene really put the fear of God in him. Because he did not want to experience that ever again. So it shows you how much fear he had at that moment yeah. in last week's episode. Because it emphasizes that when he finally gets out of that magic, he has sweat coming down his face. So yeah, clearly that scene, that one moment of his life when he tried to say something scared the shit out of him and which will probably never make him want to say something ever again yeah that mechanic does exist for him to never say it but like would she really kill him because like i want to really push it i i i want to push it to the limits because like and he if I was Subaru, I wouldn't try because I'm, I'd be too scared of it. Like, maybe she would take my regression powers away, but like, she, it was a warning and she favors us a lot. I, we might have special privileges. What, what, what if we can get away with it? Would she get mad? What would she do? Just like squeeze her heart and be like, hey, stop. Maybe she would just kill and make us reset, but then the regression keeps going. Because I still think we are a, I, I think Subaru still 
the regression power was given to him because he's important and the witch favors him. And at the end of the day, it all has to do with Amelia perhaps awakening the seal on the witch that was set by the dragon, hero, and sage, right? And it's like, why does Subaru, uh, why is Subaru loved by the witch? Because he made a promise to save Amelia in the cellar. And the association with Amelia, the half, you know, Amelia and Satala, the half elf with silver hair, somehow she must be some sort of sacrifice, a catalyst, an important key for awakening the witch. So the more that Subaru can save Amelia, the better it is for the witch to be awakened. Therefore, she likes him, is the logic that we've been going with ever since like two episodes ago, whenever, you know, Betty told us about the lore. So does it make sense that she would like kill him? You know, do you think that she would like actually fucking kill him? I'm not sure. Also, by the way, I don't know if you're being ironic, sarcastic, or you're trying to be funny, but I want you to let you know anytime you say pre watched, you're basically indirectly spoiling me. Like, you think that you're being funny or smart by saying that, but what you're now doing is indirectly confirming all the theories that I'm saying. So you're actually so beyond stupid and retarded. And just know that every time you say shit like this, like, it is the most brain-dead thing you could possibly do. It also lets me know that you cannot even follow the logic of the anime and what it's showing us. Every time I go on a fucking rant, every time I talk about what's happening throughout the show, I give exact examples and how that relates to any of the things I'm talking about. If you cannot even walk, I'm literally fucking take. I'm holding your hand and walking you through the logic it took to get there. And if that's enough for you to say pre-watched, it just goes to show how unintelligent you are, how much of a fucking monkey you are. Yes, you are brain dead and you're indirectly spoiling. Thank you for the, thank you for your participation. So that right there goes to show us what emotions he truly has at the moment. And he probably won't ever try to say something ever again. I he still want him to. Because that's how scared he was. So once again, more natural human reaction. Now, the lap pillow. Okay, so the lap pillow Pity is very lap pillow. cute. I've already talked about, you know, the characterization of how he spilled his guts out and all that. I'm fine with that. I've already talked <laughs> Spilled his guts out, he says. That's funny. Talked about that, but Elsa. I just want to talk about the romantic moment. It was so sweet seeing- It was not a romantic moment. Nah, bro. I don't care. And if you want to say that she was romantic, you are a delusional simp that probably thinks that the cashier that fucking delivered your coffee is being romantic to you because she's being nice at her job. Nah, bro. Nah, dude. That shit was all fucking pity and there was no fucking sentiment of like romance. Maybe Amelia did it out of love, but love has many different forms. I do not think that she thinks that he is the man for her right now with that lap pillow. She's simply helping him out because he helped her out a lot. Amelia actually helping out Subaru, letting him, you know, lay his head on her lap and bonding. I, mean, I, I know it was sure. kind of like fan service in a way, but I felt like, like kindness, bonding for sure. Every one of these things, I agree. But there was nothing beyond. There was no romantic intent. Like, this fan service was the proper fan service that series need to kind of do. Because Subaru, he's been suffering so much, so yeah. many episodes. He's died constantly. And seeing how he finally got some form of happiness for a moment, it made me smile. I was really happy to see him be somewhat happy. And so that lap pillow, very romantic, and seeing how she does care for him, and she saw right through him of how he had this facade on the entire episode, it goes to show you that he's easy to read in a way. So yeah, the lap pillow, 10 out of 10. Definitely one of the best nice. moments of the episode, besides the other scenes when it came to the character. Best moment of the episode? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Was there anything else that happened in episode 8 that was hilarious? I'm trying to think of if Ram made any jokes or... But no, the lap moment, the lap pillow moment was pretty good. Maybe <laughs> the roast sessions. Like, like even in break time, <laughs> we're getting fucked by Rem and Ram saying, yep, there was a lap pillow, yep, it was a lap pillow. It's just like, come on, guys. Characterization and development for Subaru. Now, when it comes to Beatrice, oh my god, Beatrice Vehicle. is so fucking amazing. She's such a good I, character. I neglected to talk much about Beatrice because I was so into talking about Subaru as a character last week, which it didn't even cross my mind. Bro, we got fucking one minute left of the video and you didn't even talk about the legends that Beatrice was saying. That shit. Mother Fuck the lap pillow, bro. We should be talking about the lore of ReZero. The devourment of the other six witches of the seven deadly sins by the Witch of Envy. A dragon, a hero, and a sage sealing the fucking witch. But the flesh could not be defeated or something. And there's these like witch of cults and people, anti-Amelia factions and how this could relate.
Come on, it, it was an error on my part. I just want to say real quick, I am very sorry for not talking much about Beatrice <laughs> in last week's episode. All and right. I want to correct that mistake with this week's episode. <laughs> Motherfucker, you have one minute of left, the video left. He has, this is 10 minutes right now out of 11.07. You're going to say, I apologize. I'm going to include, I feel like this, is he, is he memeing? Is, is he memeing? Because like, this sounds like him acknowledging the haters, you know, saying, you didn't talk about Beatrice. And be like, all right, you monkeys. I'll fucking include the one minute at the end for Beatrice. So so Beatrice is really growing on me as a character, clearly. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for her, Subaru wouldn't be hopeful at this time. He wouldn't have done kind of the things he did in the last week's episode. To yes, and even in the second run, when we died, <clears throat> and we woke up and realized that everything was forgotten, right? Beatrice was there for him. Because the checkpoint happened after Beatrice and Subaru initially met, and Beatrice, like, you know, fucked the mana out of him. So she's been... Pretty much like the bonfire, if you're going to go Dark Souls terminology or examples of, you know, every time you suffer, you suffer, you lose more of your humanity. But then there's a little place of rest, like a, like a first aid station. And Biko kind of was that from the beginning, just offering, you know, hey, I remember you. You remember me? It's like, oh, that's kind of actually nice. I have someone that actually remembers. And then offering help with like the curse, the shaman, giving us lore. And exactly what is Beatrice? Why could she make a pact with Subaru? The only things that I've seen make Pactra spirits. Biko calls Puck Nietzsche, and there's some sort of familiarity there. And she also hides in the hidden library, protecting, you know, Roswell's forbidden lolly dojins. There's something so compelling about this character. She must be such an important character. And we gained her favor in that episode where we basically was, you know, dived off the cliff. Biko has been fantastic throughout, and, like, I hope she has, like, a huge role in the plot try to change things he realized what he wants to do and thanks to Beatrice he was able to kind of come to terms with that and try to go and continue moving forward and in this episode he comes back to Beatrice he's happy-go-lucky whether he's being a very nice person he even gives her a pet name which is very cute by the way I think he said like, Beko uh, Beko or Beko yeah. or whatever but it was very cute it was a very wonderful name he gave her and I just couldn't help but laughing my ass off when he grabbed her up like a little child and all that I was just like laughing so much there is really, really cute scenes when she's too short and can't reach the fucking book. <laughs> we have to help her. Or like we're like spinning around in the drill lolly, just fucking spinning around. Or when we yoink on her fucking drill lolly here before we jump off a cliff. That's probably the last time we're ever going to do that because if we did that in an actual run, she'd get mad. And seeing this connection between these two characters, it makes me happy because he has someone to rely on. Someone yes. that he could talk to. And like the I suppose thing. I don't know why. But she has a distinct way of talking. Just like Roswell has a distinct way of talking. Biko always says, I suppose, at the very end, right? She says something and then ends with, I suppose. <laughs> it's just so cute. Someone that he normally can't, you know, talk to others. Like, he can't talk to everybody else, but he at the very least can relay some of his issues there up you know, alone with nobody watching him. It's just him and Beatrice in that room, since normally people can't enter that room. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day. I just wish that you talked a bit more about the lore. Actually, not a bit more. I just wish you talked about it at all, Chibi, about the lore of the Witch of Envy and the hero, dragon, sage, and sealing, and, you know, all of that shit, and why the witch favors Subaru and the stench of the witch, but I already pretty much said my bit here, guys. Please go to Chibi's video, like the video, sub to his channel if you haven't, and I will see you guys on the next one.